G'day everyone, welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. That's me. And today, I'm going to talk to you about some of Australia's little heroes, our possums and gliders. There's a whole range of possums and gliders found throughout Australia. There's even a couple of couscous. Now, whilst they're all similar, there are differences. Yeah, some of it is just in the size. We've got pygmy possums that are the size of mice. And we've got brush tail possums that are the size of small dogs. We've also got gliding marsupials. Now our gliders, one of them is this big. It's a feather tail glider. It only weighs less than 10 grams. And then we've got greater gliders. And greater gliders are the only other marsupial in Australia to eat eucalyptus and only eucalyptus. Now, a part of your homework is to tell me what other animal, but we'll come back to that. And let's have a look at some of our possums and gliders' external features. And I'm gonna jump about here between species, but they all have some similarities. Ears, they've got very good hearing, big or small. Now, most of them have a very reasonable sense of smell, and they can smell out nectar, blossoming flowers, or fruit, or whatever food is suitable to that species. Most have a reasonable sense of vision. But it's not great like a peregrine falcon, but it's not bad. They all have little whiskers and they can feel their way around in the dark as well as use their senses of hearing, smell and sight. Uh, let's move down the body. They vary so much in coloration. The striped possum from North Queensland is black and white, uh, but many of them are quite a brown or gray color and they blend in with their environment. Most, if not all, live in the trees. A Yabaramus or mountain pygmy possum can clamper around rocks but it still uses small bushes. Now come down the body, they all have a tail. Now the tail varies, a sugar glider is quite brushy. A feather tail glider is like the name suggests, its tail is like a little feather. And when it glides through the air, that tail just thins the air out and helps it to glide. And down to their feet, their front hands with their little claws are great for gripping onto their food, moving bits of dirt or bark off it. Their back feet are just used for walking and climbing. Now, something that's interesting is they live in the trees. So how do their hands, feet and tail help them with that? Now some possums have a prehensile tail, so they can use it to grip on like a fifth arm. And under their tail, it's often bald and it doesn't have the fur like on top. And that bald part helps them to grip on like a finger. Their hands are really grippy with rubbery palms and soles. And being a marsupial, and all possums and gliders and couscous are, all the females have pouches and they rear their young in a pouch. Possums and gliders use a vast range of habitats and shelters. Some of the smaller ones can just hide under a piece of bark. The bigger ones tend to need old growth forest and big hollow logs to shelter and breed in. And possums occupy a range of different habitats throughout Australia. They tend to not do so well in the arid interior, in the dry areas or the deserts, but they really like the coastal woodland around the entirety of Australia. There's a couple of species of possum that are real favorites of mine, and they're incredibly common. One is the brush tail possum, and the other is the ring tail possum. Now what I like about them is that they're actually natives that have learned to live in and around our urban and city areas. And I think that's incredible. Instead of seeing a feral fox or a cat or a rat, we get to see our native possums. Now, sometimes they can be a bit pesky and live in people's roofs. Now, I think you're lucky if you've got a possum in your roof, but sometimes they can make so much noise and they can go to the toilet and it'll come down the wall. But you can put a, a board up to stop the possums coming into your house, find where they're getting in, and you can just block it. You don't need to get rid of them because they're great to have around. Brush-tailed possums and ring-tailed possums have both done well in our cities and urban areas because we keep their food source there. And brush tail possums can eat lots of the plants that we grow in our garden, same for ringtails. And you can encourage them to your gardens by planting native plants. They have a really varied diet across the species. Some species like brush tail possums have a really varied diet themselves. They'll eat everything from flowers to nectar to fruits to insects and grubs. Whereas things like little feather tail gliders, they mainly eat nectar from flowers and that's their sole diet. Maybe a few insects here and there but most of them typically will feed on nectar. They love nectar from flowers. And then it varies to um, greater gliders eat eucalyptus and only eucalyptus. A yellow belly gliders eat tree sap. They've got incredibly strong teeth and they bite into the tree and the tree bleeds with its sap. And that's what the yellow belly gliders eat. But all in all, their diets are suitable to each of their habitats. 
that's why they live there, but they're incredibly varied. Australia has a number of species of possum that are rather endangered. Uh, the lead beater's possum, there's as few as a couple of thousand left in the wild, a really low number. Now the Burramus or mountain pygmy possum found in the snowfields throughout New South Wales and Victoria, it was presumed extinct for a long time. And believe it or not, it was found at a ski resort and rediscovered and now there's conservation work to help the species. But some species are still doing okay, like brush-tailed possums. But others that have a, a more of a niche or a very specific habitat are the ones most at risk. Two bits of homework for today. Something nice and easy. Draw me a possum or a glider or a couscous. Go and research it. Find out which one you like and why. Maybe one that lives near you or maybe one that lives in the Daintree Rainforest in North Queensland or the West Arnhem Escarpment in the Northern Territory, or the Kimberley, anywhere you like. Your second bit of homework, I mentioned earlier that greater gliders eat eucalyptus, and they're specialized for eating eucalyptus. But there is one other species of Australian marsupial that only eats eucalyptus. What is it? It's your job to tell me, put it in the comments. That's all for now, see you next time.